Hey, good morning, Facebook land. Good morning to everyone. It is my Thursday Facebook show. So I'm looking forward to everybody jumping on board here with me. And we're going to talk about dynamic blue skies. So when you get here, please jump in the comment box and say hello to me. I'm looking for people out there in Facebook land, you creative people who want to get on board and talk about the dynamic blue skies. So it is Thursday, my Facebook show. This is where I come and I share tips and techniques. And if you've never been to one of my Facebook shows or you don't know who I am, I am Linda Glover Gooch. I am a painter, a teacher, the creator of masterfulpainting.com. And man, I'm on this journey with you guys. So hey, if you've come on board, say hi to me in the chat. Let me know who you are and where you are from. If you're watching the replay, jump in there and say hi too. I welcome you board. If you're watching the replay, I hope that this is good, valuable content that's going to get you to the easel and get you painting. So I'm excited to have everybody. Hi, Bethany from Phoenix. Yay, my Arizona people are coming on board. We're here in Arizona today. That's where I am in Mesa, Arizona. Hello, Yvonne. Welcome. And I'm just glad everybody's coming on board. We're going to talk about dynamic blue skies today. That's going to be the focus. I usually try to run this about 30 minutes to make it a valuable lesson time. Not too long where I don't put you to sleep, but just enough inspiration that you leave this Facebook Live ready to rock and roll at your easel or your, your plein air site or your drafting drawing table, where it is, wherever you do that creative endeavor. So again, like I said, we're going to talk about dynamic blue skies. I am in Arizona. I've lived here for quite a few years, so I get the opportunity to like see these gorgeous, gorgeous blue skies and huge thunderheads. But what I'm going to talk about are the mixing of blues. Like how can we change it up so that we don't get bored with the same blue all the time that's up there in those blue skies? I'm not talking about a sunny blue sky with just clear blue sky, but typically what I'm referring to are those skies behind all the clouds, the type of stuff that happens behind clouds. So that's what we are going to go over. Remember, if you're coming on board, jump in the chat and say hi. I'd love to know everybody that's jumping in here, where everybody is from. Speaking of from, I'm in Phoenix. So I always have to share some kind of Arizona picture. So listen, I had gone to the art store the other day and it was like gorgeous clouds out. So I shot this picture. Now this is downtown Tempe. I was going to the Dick Blick art store, but I stopped at a signal and look at these cool designs to this building. Well, look at that great blue sky with that cloud behind that. It's not, not the coolest picture. I thought that that was so cool. So that's in Tempe, Arizona. And it was just right around the corner from Dick Blick's art, art supply store. And then I drove a little bit further and I got to show you this one other slide of Arizona before we start talking about color mixtures. Look at this. Check out the reflection of the clouds in that building. Is that not so cool? I loved that picture. And again, I was at a signal, so I was able to shoot a quick picture. Of course, we got all the street lights and cars and everything, but hey, I just thought it was so cool. So welcome Jane from Connecticut and Laura from South Carolina. And hi, hi Diane, my Tucson people. Awesome. We do have great, amazing clouds here. And with the blue skies are incredible. But you know, I know as well, New Mexico has great blue skies because I lived there for quite a few years. And I've done my traveling up to Montana and all those other places. And so there are blue skies in a lot of places where all you guys are. Hi, Carrie from Nebraska. Welcome. So again, where I'm going to go back to is we're going to talk about the dynamics of blue skies. And really what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through some color mixtures to um, generate ideas. So, you know, as a painter, we can fall into like formulas 
or the same way of doing things, which some of that is very vital and some of it's very important. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. Some of that is a very uh, creative part of who we are in our own voice. Like if you studied with me, you know, I talk about an air color and I use that air color a lot in my skies. But I do try to change up my blue skies. So that's what I'm going to take you through today is some of the blue skies. So uh, let me grab the video. Again, thank you everybody for joining. Remember to share and like this. If you've got a friend that paints and you think that they would like watching this at a later point in time, they can go and check the replay and, and watch it. So it is coming up. I'm going to talk to you about mixing blues. Listen to All right, we are going to look at a few of the blues that I use. Now I'm going to go through, I pause this for a minute. I'm going to go through all the different blues that I use here. And I just kind of thought it was easier and probably more efficient if I talked through the video instead of talking live. So I recorded this the other day. So this is a recorded part, but I'm still here with you, but we're going to listen to this. And we're talking about painting blue skies. And I'm not really referring to a bright, sunny blue sky with no cloud. And so my normal blue that I use a lot of is my Rembrandt Ultramarine Blue Deep. And I do use Cobalt Blue Pale from Holbein. I'm going to mix a few different blues today just to give you ideas of different directions you can go. And I'm not necessarily going to use my regular blues as if you watch many of my videos, you see these blues quite a bit. But we're going to explore some of the other blues. I am going to talk a little bit about the horizon. So I've put out cerulean blue, though normally you will see a lot of my paintings and demos. I use Severs blue from Williamsburg, but I do like cerulean blue, the blue indigo, is by Windsor Newton. And then I have laid out some Prussian blue. I do like a beautiful gray blue that you can get with this. Then I have manganese blue and hydrangea blue. I've got ivory black, and then I'm also gonna throw some alizarin crimson out there for a little bit of a grain agent. And maybe I will use a little bit of yellow ochre, possibly uh, when we do the horizon. So let's mix some colors. All right, let me talk to you about what I've done here. I've laid out the blues. So I have ultramarine blue deep, I've got the indigo, I've got the Prussian blue, the hydrangea, magnandes blue, cerulean blue, my ivory black, and my alizarin. So I have some white right here, and that is titanium white by Rembrandt, which I really like that white, it's nice and creamy. Well, the first thing I'm going to mix up is I'm going to use some indigo. And I actually will always, I never use indigo by itself, but it's an element that I like to mix into my ultramarine blue and white for a stormy sky. And this is a pretty good go-to for me. So this is white in the ultramarine blue. So when I'm using a stormy sky, I go pretty dark with my ultramarine blue and white. I actually do use quite a bit of uh, chroma in those skies with ultramarine blue and white. Now you guys, as, as we're going through these mixtures, if you've got some questions, you can drop them in the um, comment box because I'm going to try to look at questions later. And we're going to just do a little bit of mixing here. I don't like pale, wimpy skies. So I'll have that mixture and then into that, I will work this beautiful indigo blue is a very beautiful color. And typically this happens with a brush up on the canvas, but I work some of that into the ultramarine blue and white. And you can get a very stormy sky. Now the next mixture I'm going to use is some Prussian blue and white. You can make a very beautiful blue with this. If you happen to have Prussian blue and don't know how to use it, this can make a very beautiful gray blue. You know, you can use it in the gray actually of clouds if, if you wanted, or you can use it with uh, the blue sky where it's kind of gray, just depending on what kind of scene is going on. But you can see it's a little bit of an awkward blue, really, like 
I don't know if I would really use that blue in the blue of the sky, but when you take and you add a little bit of alizarin into this, it really makes a very beautiful gray blue. That is a gorgeous color right there. And I'm hoping that you can see that that is beautiful. I'd use this in a heartbeat in clouds too, but I would use this in some gray parts of my blue sky, so to speak. It could be some stormy areas behind a big billowing cloud. It could even be down in the, the horizon of a stormy scene. So that is a very beautiful. So that's the white and the Prussian blue. And then just with alizarin added to it. Now the next one, it also would work into the realm of stormy skies, the hydrangea blue. And boy, I'm gonna tell you what, this with some yellows make gorgeous greens, but we're not doing greens today. <laughs> That'll be for another time. But this is a very beautiful blue. Now, you know, you could use this up in the blue of the sky, depending on the scene that you were painting. It's not as odd of a blue as Prussian blue. Prussian blue almost leans kind of greenish. This is leaning more of blue, although it would be more of a pale blue going on right here. But this with um, ivory black added to it. So then I would pull and I would put some ivory black into this. Now remember, I don't consider ivory black a gray grayer like a gray color i consider it more of a toning agent because it's really not a color it's a value i'm gonna put a tad bit more blue into that but this would make a very nice stormy stormy sky behind a big cloud and you know boy the black is pretty potent but look at that that is a beautiful mixture but I do like it for variety. And that's the whole thing about this, talking about variety, the key you know, to variety is using different blues. All right, then we're going to do the white and manganese. And that is really a Caribbean blue. I like the way it looks. It could be a Caribbean blue sky. Uh, you know, you could use it for some different things depending on what you were doing. I would probably maybe consider more white with it and maybe use it as a horizon mixture. This could be more of a horizon tone and probably following the same idea in the horizon you know what we could do a yellow ochre or we could do a alizarin just to pink up the horizon and look you really get a kind of a dusty horizon color there that's really pretty i'm gonna go back a blue just touch that's beautiful there there could be you know just atmospheric conditions going on so that's the manganese blue and then we're going to do the white and cerulean blue which this is always a pretty good um, horizon color as well. What I like to do is a little bit, go easy with the alizarin. You get this very beautiful dark mixture. It's a very beautiful violet, deep dark violet, depending on how much you put in there. But where I really like it the best is when it's mixed with white. You get this very beautiful, beautiful gray. I'm gonna put just a tad bit more. This could be a great horizon with a storm coming in. This could be a great color in clouds, in the body of the clouds, like the mid value. But they're all very beautiful blues. So this gives you a pretty good starting point experimenting with these things is the best that's the whole idea here is to practice and experiment okay now i had a little filming snafu when i was in the works of that so you can see that spot that i've circled there um, i had said i do like to use ultramarine blue white 
So my white plus ultramarine blue deep. And then that little spot that I circled there is the um, ivory black is added to that. And I'm going to show you a couple examples here on some slides of these stormy skies with clouds. But I did a little snafu in filming, so I'm having to backtrack a little bit. But that's what that one is. And then just a little bit further here, that other pile that we're going to see circled. So that's the blue with ivory black. Then there was that pile right there. You see that one with the circle? That was the um, the uh, manganese, no, I'm sorry, the uh, hydrangea blue. And then I added some more white and more yellow ochre. That's what that pile is right there to make a very beautiful, beautiful horizon. So that was the um, mixing that I did to help you, give you some ideas. But I'm going to go through a slideshow because Diane had asked, is there a list? Which there is a list. And so let me get back over here to um, show you this. So here is the list. You could take a screenshot of this. Um, you'll find information also at my blog. There is a lot of more information about painting blue skies over on my, my blog, which is lindagloverguch.com forward slash 108. So if you remember the 108 forward slash 108, lindagloverguch.com 108 gets you to the blog. There's a different video there that I actually show you my painting process of the blue sky behind the clouds because I always paint my clouds first and then the, the blue sky behind. But here's a list. This is everything that I was working in there. So the ultramarine blue, uh, the Windsor indigo blue, the Grumbacher Prussian blue, the Holbein uh, hydrangea, the manganese, and the cerulean blue. Now, you know, you might have some of those blues in a different brand and that's fine. It does not have to be the exact same brand, but you know, they're going to create maybe a similar thing. They might act a little bit differently, but that's okay. You know, that's not a big deal. But like I said, you can find a lot of this information at the lindagloverguch.com forward slash 108. That is the blog, How to Paint Blue Skies. But I'm going to show you a little bit more. Let's move along. So you can screenshot that right now, or you can pick it up. Um, at the blog. I'll drop this picture on the blog as soon as we get off because I did neglect to put this picture on the blog and I'll go back and do that. Here you go. Screenshot this as well. That way you have a screenshot of it right now before going to the blog, but go to the blog and read because there is a lot more information beyond what I can cover in 30 minutes. But you see my mixtures. That is everything that I mixed and I'll drop this over on the blog too, so you can grab this image there as well. But these are the mixtures that I just took you through. And you know, I really want to point out that down in the bottom right-hand corner, that white, cerulean blue, and alizarin is a fabulous, fabulous gray. As a matter of fact, I think I'm going to start teaching with that in some of my clouds. So um, there's all the list. You can get a screenshot, or like I said, jump over to the blog later today, and you'll see these images on there. Now, let's look at this right here. This painting has got some of these mixtures that I just showed you, uh, except for the white and cobalt blue pill in the left-hand corner. I didn't mix that today, but I wanted to talk about the stormy skies. You know, like I said, painting something different in the blues of your skies will kind of be interesting for you, meaning not that we get bored painting, but I can, you guys. I'm going to be honest. I can get a little bored. So in that top right-hand corner, that's ultramarine blue with the indigo blue mixture. Remember the very first mix? I said I take white and ultramarine blue, and then I'll use some um, white and indigo blue, but I don't mix it on my palette. But I said typically in the, I my wording said typically this happens up on the canvas. That's what made that real dark stormy blueness in the right-hand corner. Then... Here's another mixture, and that's the white ultramarine blue with black in it. See that stormy dark color? Like, I'm pretty dramatic with my blues when I get these big billowing clouds. You know, I see this happen here in Arizona. Sometimes the skies can go so dark, like you want to make sure you're not far from home because you don't know what's going what's gonna to happen in that weather you know, creation, what it's going to do. So there is the ultramarine blue and the black. Now, here we're jumping to a whole different scene. 
Now, sometimes sunsets, that sky will go really light. Now you can see here, the cerulean blue and the alizarin, where I said was a beautiful, beautiful gray. But over here, it's I've really lightened it. So it's really light, plus it's intermixing with the color above it, which is still, now remember there's always white, white plus cerulean on all these mixtures. White plus cerulean and yellow ochre are making that very pale, pale blue up top. And as it moves down, then it started going into the pinks with alizarin. And then further down, you can see the influence of orange. So here's the thing. I didn't want to go from yellow just down to that, you know, bright, bright orange at sunset. We want gradations and we want, we want easy marriages. We want an easy flow as we go down to those color changes. So that's why it was white with cerulean blue and yellow ochre up high. Made this very beautiful, warm influence of what's happening with the sunset downed with a little bit of pinks as i started reaching the mid level heading down into those oranges down in the sunset and then over on the left again was the white and cobalt blue pale which i did not mix that color so that gives you a good idea of um some some different mixtures this is what i wanted to do was i wanted to create curiosity in you use different blues types of uh different scenes are gonna call for different colors and sometimes you know we can even have a little bit of green in some of our skies it's just depending on that thank you diane i'm glad that you guys finding this helpful you know i hope that you are because again I don't know about you, but listen, I was a student for a lot of years and I bought a lot of different colors because if I took a class, I always wanted to try a color. So I even have more blues than this. And sometimes I'll pull them out and try different ones. But I do typically go to Ultramarine Blue Deep quite a bit, but I try to influence it with others because it is a good, strong blue that represents the blue of the sky. But then I do try to vary it because I want it to be interesting. And remember, I really preach this a lot. Don't be married to your photo. Let yourself be creative. This is where your voice will show up. If you don't get hung up in the photo, right? If you don't make yourself be so like, unless you're doing something historical, or you're doing a commission that they're calling for a very certain look. Like you, you have to make it look a certain way. Give yourself the freedom of being creative. You know, and, and if you have problems with your composition, okay, so what? Change it. <laughs> I'm changing stuff all the time. This sunset over here on this side. The sunset behind me has gone through some serious changes over the last few days, and I'm still working on it. And sometimes composition, you know, even the clouds out in nature don't always work on a painting. Sometimes there can be some odd looking stuff that you try to put that on a painting, and it's not always uh, to your benefit. It doesn't always work. So that is one thing to remember. I, that's my one thing I want to leave you with is to make sure that you um, are being true to yourself. Don't be married to the image and give yourself some creative, some creative, uh, creative opportunities, allowance. I'm going to add something here. So there is the list again. That was all the mixtures that I was working with. I'll get over to the blog right away. I forgot to drop these two images. I want to drop this image and I'm going to drop the still shot image of the mixtures, which is right here. I'll drop those two over on the blog here in a little bit. So if you didn't get a screenshot or you want to be able to go and really just save it, you can, you know, you can just uh, save the image off of there and practice with some of these blues and give yourself the opportunity to to explore and you'll find then that not everything has the exact same blue sky you know i'm going to be honest with you guys i used to paint solid blue skies let's see i'm going to go back to about 2000 and i'm not sure 
12, 11, something like that. I'm not sure what date that was when I just wanted blue skies all the time because I didn't want to deal with clouds, right? Because I was like, I don't want to deal with those. Those things are way too hard. But I was at the Grand Canyon and this huge thunderhead was building. I was not painting that thunderhead. I was painting a different direction. But my peripheral vision, I kept catching up with that. I'm going to take my picture off. made me look at this cloud differently, look at the sky differently at the Grand Canyon. And that cloud that was developing, I finally wiped everything off the canvas, turned and tried to paint that cloud plain air, which I did. It painted itself. It was one of those glorious plain air moments that the, the cloud painted itself. And that's when I became a cloud painter. So blue skies are the backdrop to your clouds. So remember what I was saying. And here's, I want to also tell you about this. If you want to join the creative journey, you can do it at lindagloverguch.com. But I have a cloud webinar coming up. And you can register at the website, lindagloverguch.com forward slash 108. If you go to the blog today, I have a spot. I have a cloud webinar coming up. You can click that link. Next week, I'm going to be doing a cloud webinar, which where I will spend, I think I have a 30-minute demo that I'm going to share with you on um, painting clouds. I'm going to take you through three major steps, three top key elements that I use when I approach my clouds, and I'm going to do about a 30-minute demo for you there. So if you're interested in watching that webinar, then go to lindagloverguch.com forward slash 108 and click on the link on the blog there. It's right kind of at the top where I've got it listed for you to go and register for the webinar. Um, it's got a great, I've got great lessons for you there and it, it's just, it's super helpful. So you can do that also at the blog um, in a little bit. I'll have those slides on the blog for you. I meant to add them last night and just in getting ready for everything that slipped past me but you will find them at the blog with all the blues and just different things. So I'm going to check and see if there's any more questions. Um, and funny, Diane, the cloud whisperer. I don't know, sometimes those clouds, they kind of beat me up. So um, I'm glad that you found this helpful. And Ina, thank you for joining too. I know you joined in while I was doing my demo. And if there's any other questions, I'm going to look here for one more minute and then we're going to log off. Um, we're at two minutes from 30 minutes. I really tried to just do this in about a 30 minute time span so I don't keep people too long. Just go and practice. See these boards behind me here up on the wall? Do this kind of stuff too. I'm going to show you here. Let me grab one of them. If you have, if you have extra canvases, you can do this kind of stuff. I even have a, a smaller one up there behind there. That's some mixtures from a, a commission that I did. And I wanted to keep track of the colors that I used. Um, yes, Bethany, great. You're going to join the cloud webinar. That would be good. You'll you'll have a good time. I'm having trouble getting my thunder clouds to pop. That, Bethany, could be a temperature thing. If you're having a hard time getting them to pop, there are two things, temperature and value. So this is Bethany. She is saying that she's having trouble getting her thunder clouds to pop. That's either value or temperature or both. So yeah, join that webinar. I think you'll be surprised. People are typically surprised about how dark I go with some of my mixtures. But see this panel? So this is like sky colors, sky mixtures that I use. I'm still doing this stuff. I am a student today, you guys. Like, I don't know it all. I never have known it all. I'll never know it all. I'm constantly learning. When my biggest blessing here is like when I teach you, I like learn more. 
that's the cool thing about teaching is it teaches you like the teacher learns because I learn a lot from my students. I love seeing people's work, but see this right here, flipping that a little bit, there's a little bit of a glare and I write my little, this one is dry because I did it a while ago, but these are like some grays. So the blog in, in coming in two weeks from today, uh, the day, my next, uh, I'll be back on March 21st. I'm going to teach you about mixing beautiful, beautiful grays. Uh, the grays and clouds like up there behind me. Sorry, this is backwards when I'm looking up behind me. Some of the grays, not the sunset, but the blue skies, some of those grays. I'm going to teach on that in two weeks. So that would be March 21st. I'll be back. But here's another one. Now, this one is just a bunch of different mixtures when I was experimenting. So I make these boards for myself, right? because it's really helpful. And, you know, just use a little sharpie. Now, these are little pieces of canvas. See, that was a canvas board, but I needed a very uh, specific size. So I cut one of the Centurion panels to make it a very specific size. I am very, very particular about proportions being accurate. And if you want to know anything about that, you need to go back to one of my blogs before I believe it's the 107, Linda Glover Gooch forwards dot com forward slash 106. I think it's 106. We talk about sketching. And in that, I talk to you about proportions. And I've got on there a video showing you the proportional wheel that I use, all my sketching supplies and what I use. And I have an 18 minute lesson sitting there. And that's uh, Linda Glover Gooch forward slash dot dot com forward slash 107 um, how to find time to sketch that is a cool blog to go to and get some practice <clears throat> and then we talk about proportions <clears throat> excuse me i'm doing so much talking losing my voice but anyway make some of those color swatches for yourself so get over to the blog here in a little bit i'll have both of these slides the list and the mixture i'll set those in there for you you can grab them there if you didn't get a clear screenshot and then you can also register for the upcoming webinar next week. It's got a 30-minute lesson that I'm going to go through, Painting Clouds. And um, also, just like I said, check out the other blogs, too. There's a lot of great information. But today's blog, this week's blog, is about blue skies. And there is a different video on there for you. It's about um, me building my big cloud and painting behind it. And Bethany... That might be a good one for you to watch, the video on the 108 blog, because you can really see that cloud popping. Now, it's the beginning stages. It hasn't been really softened, but I'm taking you through those steps. So that would be a good place for you to go. All right, my friends, we are at my 30-minute mark. Like I said, I try not to keep all of you too much. What is the replacement for hydrangea blue? Well, I mean... Hydrangea blue, I don't know that there is a replacement. There's, It's just a different blue. I would say if you um, need a very, like if you can only have a couple blues, make sure you have ultramarine blue. Now, I prefer Rembrandt's ultramarine blue deep. And you can find the list of these on the blog as well. Um, I do have affiliate links there. I always like to make sure that I say that there are affiliate links. I do receive a small commission. So uh, that's just being really transparent about that, those lists there. But if you can only get one blue, I would use Rembrandt Altering Blue Deep. It's not overly priced, but it's gorgeous. And I just like the deep. It's just a little bit stronger. But if you have Altering Blue and another brand, totally fine. Totally use it up before you go buy another one. So, um, yeah, Donna, I don't know that I would say there is a replacement for the Hydrangea Blue. Uh, just it's just a blue that actually, I'm going to tell you why I bought the hydrangea blue was when I painted up at Glacier National Park quite a bit. Because you know the water there, the glacier waters up there have that different greenish blue. And the hydrangea blue was helpful for that. Now, we're not talking about water, so I didn't introduce that here. But I will share that with you, that that's why I have the hydrangea blue but I don't paint a lot of Montana glacier waters. So I thought, how can I use that in skies? So I've been experimenting and using it in my skies. And so I'm just showing you the mixtures. Does that make sense? Hopefully that, that helps you. 
sorry, I can't say another blue would replace it. Um, so anyway, hopefully that helps you, Donna. Thanks for the questions. If anybody doesn't have any more questions, I'm going to jump off of here. The replay will stay on my um, post on my page here. You can jump back in and watch it again, but do go to the blog, register for the webinar. I will have screenshots for you. Thank you all for coming. Remember to share and like this. It helps the algorithm. Other people get to watch it. We're all on this journey together. This is a growing time. We're all learning together. Like I said, I'm still learning. I get to learn from you guys. Thank you, Jane, for coming. Donna, Bethany, Beth, uh, Diane, all of you that are here today, Donna. You know, Ina, I'm just calling you all out for coming and hanging out with me. Yvonne, appreciate it. Carrie, Jane, thank you guys. All right. Now you know what to do. The rule. Get to the easel. Practice, practice. But most importantly, you got to enjoy it. All right, my friends, two weeks back here, March 21st, I'm going to have some beautiful mixing of blue skies, grays, grays, I'm sorry, mixing of grays, and um, probably a video of showing you uh, some of those grays done up into the clouds. So that'll be cool. All right, my friends, have a good day. Stay well and keep at the easel. Bye.